Oh yeah, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Chica Chica Learning. In this video, we're gonna do an example problem dealing with curvilinear motion in Cartesian coordinates. And in this problem, I've got a particle that's moving on a path that's described by this equation here, y equals kx squared, where k is negative five times 10 to the minus three per meter, x squared plus b, which is 4.5 meters. And so I've got this path of the particle described by this function. And I also know that at x a equal to 15 meters, my particle is moving with a constant velocity of 23 meters per second. Yes. And what I'd like to do is find the horizontal and vertical components of velocity and the horizontal and vertical components of acceleration. And if I plotted the graph of this y equals kx squared plus b, this is what I have. I've got this half in the red. My particle is at x equals 15 meters and the velocity is tangent to the path and it's moving up this hill sort of deal at 23 meters per second. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and solve for all this. But before I do, I hope you'll take a minute, hit subscribe, like, and share, structure free, and support the tutorials that I'm making so I can feed my babies. All right, all right. So the first thing that we're gonna do is deal with the velocity. You know, knowing that the velocity is tangent to the path really provide an opportunity to determine the horizontal and vertical components graphically. As in like, you know, if I were to zoom in right here, I know that it's tangent to the, I'm trying to find the horizontal component VAX and VA y like this because i know that it, the magnitude is 23 meters per second pointing up you know the reality is if i know this angle right here which i'll call theta by right triangles i can determine vax and vay the way i can determine that angle theta if i can figure out what the slope of this curve is but if i can figure out the angle of the slope which is also theta then dude i can go back calculate the components from that right triangle so how do i determine this angle theta well i guess that goes back to the question what the heck is the slope at a. All I gotta do is take a derivative of y with respect to x. Thank you, calculus. dy dx is the slope dy dx. So I'll take a derivative of this function with respect to x. So let's see, x squared becomes 2x times negative 5 times 10 to the third. So that's negative 10 times 10 to the minus 3 per meter x. And then 4.5 is zero it's just a constant so a yes and at a which is at x equals 15 meters if i just plug and chug the slope here is negative 0.15 and the way that look here if this is a distance one as i go like rise over run this is like negative 0.5 to one so one across 0.15 down and this is that right triangle that would represent the slope at that instant this angle right here which is also that angle theta i can determine determined by inverse tangent. So theta is tan inverse of 0.15 over 1, and that comes out to 8.53 degrees. Yes, so I know the magnitude of that angle. And when I go back to this drawing here, since I know this is 8.53 degrees, and I can determine the horizontal and vertical components by geometry. And so I know theta is 8.53 degrees. So the magnitude of the horizontal component would be uh, VA cosine of theta, which would be, and then the vertical component, VAY, would be VA sine theta. Yes. And so these are the magnitudes of the components. If I want to put this in its like correct vector form, you know, the way that we have our coordinate system set up here, like here's this origin. I have the unit vector in the I direction, the I hat unit vector, and this would be my J hat unit vector. You know, obviously this represents my X axis and this Y axis. If I want to put this in its proper vector form, you know, I see that VAX is 22.75 meters per second pointing to the left and VAY is 3.41 meters per second pointing up. This vector VA would be negative 22.7 I hat plus 
1.41 meters per second. J, I have the horizontal and vertical component. Ayo. All right, so now we want to determine the acceleration components. The hint here is that we have constant velocity, which means that the total acceleration tangent to the path is zero. And that's the first thing that you have to know is, is how to translate that statement. What is constant velocity? If I were to draw a schematic and here is my tangent line and I'll kind of exaggerate it this time. And I know that the total acceleration parallel to that tangent line is zero. Well, I don't know what my acceleration, the X or the Y are. So here, I'll just draw those in. I'll just assume that a Y goes up like this and a x is horizontal and i'm assuming in their positive i hat and j hat direction you know what i would do is take this a x and break it up into components that are parallel and perpendicular to the tangent like here is a line perpendicular to the tangent right here and a x i would break up into lines parallel and perpendicular to the tangent so a x that's parallel to the tangent and then perpendicular to the tangent like this. So you see how I just created a right triangle here. And what's awesome is this angle is also theta. And then same, the same idea, parallel and perpendicular to tangent for a y, you know, I would have, if I break up this vector this way, I know that this angle is also theta. And if you will, this would be kind of a tangential component for the a, right? And I know that the sum of those two should equal zero. For AX, that tangent component would be AX cosine of theta. This tangent component is pointing to the right, whereas this tangent component for AY is pointing to the left. Then I would have a difference. So this would be minus AY sine theta equal to zero like this. Okay, so I've got one equation. I know theta, but I have one equation and two unknowns. So where am I going to get this other equation from? Well, if I take a closer look at this path equation here, and instead of taking a derivative with respect to x, but instead I start taking derivatives with respect to time, then I may be able to come up with a relationship between AX and AY. Here is my equation for this path. Oh, um, this might be easier. Maybe that's why they gave me this KX squared plus B like this. You know, I know Y and X are functions of time. And so if I take a time derivative dy dt, which is the same as vy, this would be 2kx and by the chain rule times x dot like this or dx dt, which, which is the same as saying 2kx times x dot like this. All right. And then if I take another time derivative, you know, dvy dt, well, this is the acceleration in the y. And this time I have two functions and I've got to use the product rule. So what I'll do is I will hold x constant first. So I'll have 2kx and I'll take a time derivative of x dot, which is x double dot, plus the next time I'll hold x dot constant, so 2kx dot, and then I'll take a derivative of x, which is x dot. And so this a y is 2kx a x, x double dot is the acceleration component in the x direction, plus 2k and x dot is the same as the velocity component in the x direction. So this would be vx squared. Yes. Now I can plug in some numbers. It looks like I'm going to have another relationship at x equal to 15 meters. And essentially I have now a relationship between a y and a x. And so I've got here is my second equation. Here is my first equation. And so a y is an unknown and a x is an unknown. I have two equations, two unknowns, and all I got to do now is just solve. And I'm going to start by substituting for a y in equation one. So I'm going to combine, I'm going to substitute two into one. We found that a x is negative 0.76 meters per second squared. And what that means is, that actually instead of pointing to the right, it's actually pointing to the left. 
So here, this is the same as 0.76 meters per second squared pointing to the left like this, and or it's opposite of the way we drew it. And a y, if we go back and plug and chug, is 5.06 meters per second squared. And we get a negative result here, meaning that it's pointing down. Or we could write this as 5.06 meters per second squared pointing down. And if I were to write this again, the acceleration vector in its vector form, the acceleration at A would be negative 0.76 meters per second squared I hat minus 5.06 meters per second squared j hat those are my acceleration points all right hopefully that was useful take it easy search your